3D printers are wonderful. They can do an awful lot for you, really enhance what you're uh, able to do in your maker shop, uh, but they do require maintenance. This particular unit, um, I'm going to guess is maybe four or five years old, could be a little older. It's a CR10 from Creality. Uh, one of the things that you'll get used to doing is replacing or lubricating your cooling fans. I believe this will be the third, maybe the fourth time I've been in uh, this enclosure uh, to correct the uh, cooling fan problems. I got one that's noisy again. Uh, to work on it, I've disconnected it completely from the printer. I've removed AC power and uh, completely, there's no way to power it right now, so I'm going to put that cord on the floor and uh, now I'm going to start taking it apart. Uh, they're all pretty much the same. You're going to remove a few screws from the enclosure. Uh, in this case, there's these four on the side that will remove the power supply. And then upside down, we're going to have these five screws that allow us to remove the bottom plate. So I'm going to go through all of that, and uh, that will give us access to the inside to find the noisy fan. Now, as you can see, the power supply is at the base, and it blocks access to where we need to go, which is uh, beyond this power supply. So that's these four screws. If you don't recognize this device, this is just a 3D printed uh, holder for SD cards, and it brings uh, the port, this uh, SD card port, out over here for convenience. It was uh, something I found on Thingiverse and it's proved to be uh, quite nice. Okay, and you'll see that it's just connected in here with a ribbon cable. I'll take that off. The power supply is now loose. My guess is, from where I could hear the sound, I'm guessing that this is the fan that's making the noise. Try as I might, of course the little screws had to fall down inside. Let me fish those out and I'll be right back. I've cut the wire ties so I can move it around and, and get better access to it while we uh, explore this. Now the first thing I notice it's by www.noiseblocker.de, which kind of is an indication that it's probably not from China. Uh, it could be uh, German designed and made in China, but it doesn't say one way or the other. It's called Ultra Quiet XS1 Noise Blocker. Uh, well, apparently it might block noise for a little while, but then something goes wrong with it. Now I'm going to plug power back in. And we're going to turn it on again one more time just to absolutely verify this is the culprit. And no question, this is the culprit. Uh, it's not making a lot of noise here, but uh, it certainly has got a little uh, vibration to it. And I'm trying to get it so that it's a little louder, but unless it's bolted to something, I don't think it transmits the vibration. Uh, but nonetheless, let me bring you in a little closer so you can see what this guy looks like. Uh, it's an aftermarket fan. It's not original Creality. Uh, so I'm going to try to save it. I'm going to peel off this sticker and then this one and see if I can't find access to the bushing. And maybe a drop of oil will, will help uh, fix it. Powering down, removing power again. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out, I've got a stack of DVDs over here to act as a support for the power supply. You really don't want that hanging off the edge, pulling on your uh, uh, power wires. So try to support that the best you can. Well, this one looks like the easiest to get off. And 
Wow, I have to grab that with a pliers, man, destroying the little sticker in the process, but... Oh, look at that. I think we got a little, little bearing there, a little bushing. So I'm going to take that sticker all the way off. Take a look at it. It does appear that uh, there is some grease that came out of the bearing. If you can kind of see uh, what looks like wetness right around uh, the bearing for the shaft, I should say. And yeah, it's a little bit wet. Uh, so it might be running dry for some reason. Yeah, and I think you can see that uh, it was a yellowish colored oil or grease. You can see that here on the uh, cloth. All right, so with that, I can also feel something over here, but I'm going to probe that and see if there is a hole there or something sticking up. I don't think there's a hole through here. It just feels like a little nib maybe at the center. Um, so now I just need to figure out what type of... A lubricant I want to put on there to see if I can help quiet it up. After further probing on that, there is a possibility that uh, there is a hole here, so I am going to pull the sticker off. I'm pretty sure the fan will work perfectly fine if I can't get the sticker back on again. And I'm wrong. There's a little recess there, but certainly no, no hole uh, to, to access that bearing. Well, upon further examination, there is a small C-clip that holds this shaft in here. Now, I'm very tempted to pop it off, and then I'll be able to slide the whole fan out this side. Uh, and then I could probably get some grease around the shaft and in the hole, and uh, that would lubricate it up very similar to how it came from the factory. But I seriously doubt I'm going to be able to get that clip back on for reassembly. So the next option I've got is to use some oil. This happens to be probably a motor oil. Uh, I use that a lot for uh, lubricating things that uh, I need uh, with a heavier viscosity than, say, a light machine oil. So I'm just going to put a couple drops down in there and let those soak in around that shaft. And uh, then we'll reassemble it and see if that helps. I, with Knowing that it's a bushing bearing, you don't get a lot of life out of these usually. Uh, so at this point I'm just trying to get it to run quiet and a little smoother uh, till I can find an appropriate replacement. Perhaps one of higher quality that might cost me more than a couple of dollars uh, that has ball bearings in it. And then that way I don't have to open this uh, enclosure up uh, every 100 or 200 hours of operation uh, to do service on it. So. Okay, I've been letting that soak for about oh, 20 minutes or so, and I've pushed up and down on the fan a little bit. If you push in the center here, it'll move up and down. That's your spring-loaded axial uh, device, uh, kind of like a bearing, so to speak, for axial load. Uh, now I'm just mopping up any excess oil that's in there. Um, interestingly, I will say that the engine oil that I'm using is the exact same color as the lubricant that was in there, although I do know what was in there was of a thicker viscosity. So that's cleaned up good. I'm going to put one of the stickers back on it to try to seal that.
Well, actually, first, let's test it and see what we got. Uh, maybe I need to put more oil on it, let it soak for a little bit longer. Let's see what we got. It is certainly quieter. Uh, it's got just the tiniest amount of vibration in it. I'll hold it up by the mic. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Um, I might actually just give it another drop and uh, let that soak for a little while longer and see if that uh, just doesn't help it a little bit more. And uh, the next print I got is almost a 24-hour print, so what's another 20 minutes of waiting uh, to let the lubrication soak in? So I'm going to put another dab on there, let it soak, and then uh, we'll put the stickers on, put it all back together. Okay, well, uh, that's just going to have to do it. Um, again, I'm going to mop up any excess oil that's in there. I don't want that running around uh, getting on things. Um, once I get that, we'll try to reapply the stickers and then remount everything back in the case. And unfortunately, I know what's going to happen uh, when I go to screw this into the base. My big old hands are going to block any view with the camera, so we'll just put that all on fast forward and you'll have to trust that I'm actually doing it. Well, you know, that one just really doesn't have much stick left in it. And I don't know if the camera's picking the color up there, but you can see that the original lubricant got onto the sticker and it has since affected its ability to stick. Now the other sticker, the one that was on the fan side of this, is in pretty good shape. So hopefully that'll hold up long enough till I can get a replacement fan and we can get that installed. Now if you got the Creality CR10, um, the one thing that uh, is a bit of a challenge getting this fan back in the case is uh, it's down in here and there's really not a lot of room for your hands. So what I've been doing over the various attempts to fix this darn thing is I get my screws onto the little uh, angle bracket and then I carefully engage my Allen wrench. I carefully lower that down in there and get one screw started and then the other. And I got really lucky that time because I got it in the first try. I'm proud because I got lucky. Snug those up. I'll put a wire tie in over on this side. Now I'm going to give a good look over, and I'll go through, look over everything, uh, check to see if all the screws are tight. And again, power is completely removed from this uh, device. I'm just going to snug and make sure all the screws are tight everywhere. Now, in theory, you would think none of these should be able to loosen up, but for some reason, they do. Okay, that 
that's it for everything that could be loose. Push down on all the connectors, make sure they're all fine. You don't want anything coming loose. And that should, oh, there's another connector. All right. Now we will get the power supply back in there. That goes in kind of uh, at an angle like this. You sneak it in underneath this tab. I'll tilt it on its side and then we'll be putting the four screws in on this side. Now if you can't see what I'm doing, I'm lifting up on the power supply to bring it up into contact with this machine screw, the button head screws here. Once I got that started, then I'll switch over to this end, get these started, and then we can snug them all up. And as always, anytime assembling things with sheet metal, just start all the screws first, get the threads engaged, then come back and then tighten them all. Because inevitably, if you tighten up your first screw, the other holes won't line up. All right, with everything plugged back in, let's turn on power. Whoa, sounds very good. I think we've got a successful temporary fix. As mentioned, I don't think uh, this lubrication is going to last. I think the fan does need to be replaced, but uh, at least now I bought a little bit of time and I can get a few more prints done and out of the way. Life is good again. My 3D printer is back to being a productive member of my tool family.